Saddle up, everyone. Have you heard of the cowboy icon Roy Rogers? Back in the 1940s, he was more than simply a silver screen sensation. He was the heartthrob, wearing a hero's hat with a heart of gold. Roy was more than simply a singing cowboy. He was a legend both on and off television, stealing hearts with his musical skill and his portrayal of the ideal family man. But real life is very different from real life for Hollywood stars, and the same was the case with Rogers. Recently, his daughter has confirmed the rumors about him, and the truth is shocking. Early life. Leonard Franklin Sly, later known as Roy Rogers, was born in Cincinnati, Ohio in the year 1911. Len was born to Maddie and Andrew Andy Sly and grew up in a low-income tenement on 2nd Street. The family had an odd connection to baseball since Roy would joke that he was born at second base. He had three sisters named Kathleen, Mary, and Cleta. Andy Sly, Roy's father, desired a more fulfilling existence outside of the city and his dismal career. In the year 1912, he and his brother Will built a 12-by-50-foot houseboat out of salvaged timber, and the Sly family set sail up the Ohio River towards Portsmouth. Despite plans to build a house, the Great Flood of 1913 changed their fate. The flood allowed them to relocate the houseboat to their newly purchased land, transforming it into an unorthodox dwelling on dry land. In 1919, the Sly family opted to relocate to Duck Run, Ohio, where they bought a farm and erected a six-room house. Recognizing the limitations of his farm income, Andy obtained a job at a shoe factory in Portsmouth. On weekends, he would return home with gifts, including a horse, which was young Roy's first introduction to equestrian. Living without a radio, the Slys developed their own entertainment by hosting square dances on Saturdays. Roy, who was able to display his musical abilities, sang, played the mandolin, and led square dances. He even learned to yodel and used it to connect with his mother over huge distances on the farm. Roy went to high school in McDermott, Ohio, but family financial problems forced him to drop out and work at his father's shoe business instead. Attempts at night school were unsuccessful owing to humiliation for falling asleep in class. When Roy's sister Mary relocated to California in 1929, he and his father decided to abandon their factory jobs and travel west. The Sly family, packed into their 1923 Dodge, spent four months visiting Mary in Lawndale, California, before returning home to Ohio. Roy's next opportunity came when he returned to California with Mary's father-in-law in 1930. The rest of the family followed suit and rented a little house near Mary. Roy and his father found work driving gravel trucks on a highway construction project. As 1931 dawned, the construction company declared bankruptcy, forcing Roy to go to Tulare, California, in search of work. He picked peaches for Del Monte while suffering the economic hardships of the Great Depression. Living in a labor camp, Roy encountered situations similar to those depicted in John Steinbeck's masterpiece, The Grapes of Wrath. Music Ventures Roy started out as a 19-year-old dreamer. Returning to Lawndale, Roy's sister Mary played an important role in his story. She suggested he try out for the Midnight Frolic radio show, which airs on KMCS in Inglewood. Roy overcame his shyness and appeared on the show a few nights later, wearing a western shirt beautifully crafted by Mary. Roy demonstrated his musical abilities by singing and yodeling while holding his guitar. Roy's turning point came just a few days after his radio appearance when he was asked to join a local country music group called the Rocky Mountaineers. He accepted the offer and became a member on August 1931. Roy Rogers' musical journey began. Roy took a key step on September 1931 when he hired Canadian-born Bob Nolan in response to the group's classified notice in the Los Angeles Herald Examiner. The ad simply stated, Yodeler for old-time act to travel. Tenor is preferred. Although Nolan's stint with the Rocky Mountaineers was brief, he and Roy remained in touch. Tim Spencer replaced Nolan in the group. As the spring of 1932 arrived, Roy, Tim Spencer, and another singer called Slumber Nichols departed the Rocky Mountaineers to establish the trio. Unfortunately, this endeavor was short-lived. 
Roy and Spencer spent the year in various short-lived organizations, including the International Cowboys and the O-Bar-O Cowboys. When Spencer decided to take a vacation from music, Roy landed a gig with Jack Lefebvre and his Texas Outlaws, a prominent group on a Los Angeles radio station. The Pioneers Trio was formed in early 1933 by Roy, Bob Nolan, and Tim Spencer. Roy played guitar, Nolan played string bass, and Spencer took over the lead vocals. They spent weeks perfecting their vocal harmonies as Roy continued to work with his radio singing group. Meanwhile, Spencer and Nolan began writing music for the trio. Hugh Farr, a fiddler, joined the group in 1934, and they became the Sons of the Pioneers. The name change occurred after a radio station announcer decided they were too young to be pioneers, and the new moniker stuck. As the summer of 1934 arrived, the Sons of the Pioneers' fame grew far beyond Los Angeles, quickly spreading across the country via short syndicated radio pieces. The ensemble signed a recording contract with the newly established DECA label, which was a big milestone. On August 8, 1934, they released their first commercial recording, which included the legendary Tumbling Tumbleweeds, composed by Bob Nolan. Over the next two years, the Sons of the Pioneers recorded 32 songs for DECA, including the timeless hit Cool Water. Roy Sly's journey was distinguished by perseverance, teamwork, and pursuing his passion for music. Little did he realize that these early experiences would pave the way for his subsequent triumph as the beloved Roy Rogers, leaving an indelible influence on the world of country music. Filming. Now we'll look at the unique period during which he rose to prominence in Western films. He made his cinematic debut in 1935 as Len Sly and has since worked primarily in Western pictures. Notably, he played a significant supporting role as a singing cowboy in a Gene Autry film, while still known as Leonard Sly. In 1938, a watershed moment occurred when Gene Autry sought more money for his labor, sparking a search for a new singing cowboy who could be paid less. Several singers competed for the role, including Willie Phelps of the Phelps Brothers, an early Western film performer. To the delight of many, Len Sly won the sweepstakes, and was given the stage name Roy Rogers by Republic Pictures. The name Roy, combined with the surname of famed Western comedy entertainer Will Rogers, gave rise to the legendary moniker. Roy Rogers, who played the lead in Under Western Stars, became a matinee sensation and a direct challenger for Autry's title as the nation's favorite singing cowboy. Roy, unlike other performers, frequently played characters with his own names, which was reminiscent of Autry's manner. Roy's popularity grew, as evidenced by the Motion Picture Herald's Top 10 Money-Making Western Stars poll. From 1939 to 1954, he topped the list for an incredible 16 years in a row, including a commanding lead in 1943. Roy topped the box office poll from 1943 to 1952, with Randolph Scott coming in second in the latter three years. These surveys demonstrated Roy's ongoing popularity as a series star. His influence on the entertainment business went beyond the silver screen. Roy Rogers became an idol for many children, enthralling audiences with his films and television appearances. Most notably, his post-war pictures were in true color, which was unusual for B-Westerns at the time. Some of his films smoothly turned into animal adventures, starring his beloved horse, Trigger, who would go on solitary travels with the camera tracking his every move. Roy's wisdom in economic talks was shown in his 1940 contracts with Republic Pictures. He acquired the rights to his likeness, voice, and name for merchandising, resulting in a multitude of Roy Rogers branded products. Roy Rogers' name was second only to Walt Disney in terms of the variety of things featuring his brand, which included action figures, cowboy adventure novels, comic strips, and a long-running comic book series. His involvement with the Sons of the Pioneers persisted, even though he was no longer an active member. They frequently performed as Roy's support band in a variety of mediums, maintaining a bond that lasted until his demise. Roy Rogers and Dale Evans met in 1944, marking the start of a personal and professional partnership. They became ardent Christians, 
actively engaged in the Hollywood Christian group after becoming well-known for their adoption advocacy and the founding of children's organizations. Evans wrote the classic theme song, Happy Trails, which became linked with the end of their television show. Roy and Dale had a significant impact on the streets, highways, and municipal structures in Apple Valley, California, where they lived. These were named in honor of their work on behalf of homeless and disabled children. Aside from his entertainment profession, Roy was an ardent Freemason and Shriner who supported a variety of charity causes. In the autumn of 1962, the duo co-hosted The Roy Rogers and Dale Evans Show, an ABC comedy western variety program. Although it was canceled after three months, their memory was preserved by countless cameo appearances on popular television shows. Roy Rogers licensed his name to the Marriott Corporation in 1968, resulting in the rebranding of Hot Shops restaurants as Roy Rogers. Despite his name association, Roy played no direct role in the venture. Roy returned to Lubbock in 1970 to lead the Texas Tech University Intercollegiate Rodeo alongside Dale. His final film, Macintosh and TJ, was shot in 1975 at the ranch in King County near Lubbock. Roy Rogers' legacy as a singing cowboy, actor, and cultural icon is indelible, having influenced generations of followers across the world. Trigger. In 1932, a rare Palomino colt was born in California and named Golden Cloud. This small colt had a destiny that was associated with the renowned Roy Rogers. When Roy became the fortunate owner of this Palomino colt, he gave him a new name, Trigger, which would become well-known in its own right. Trigger was more than simply a horse. He became an iconic emblem of the cowboy lifestyle and Roy Rogers' genuine companion. Roy has two equine companions, Trigger and Trigaro, a thoroughbred racehorse. This enthusiastic racehorse accomplished an impressive achievement, winning 13 races in his career. Among his successes was the renowned 1975 El Encino Stakes at Santa Anita Park, which demonstrated his speed and ability on the track. However, Trigger had a particular place in Roy's heart. This beautiful Palomino wasn't simply a horse, he was a star. Trigger featured alongside Roy in several of his films and television appearances, and he became a popular character in his own right. Roy Rogers and Trigger shared a special bond that captivated audiences worldwide. Trigger's intelligence and ability to do tricks added to his already exceptional qualities. This amazing horse could do more than simply run. He could obey directions and demonstrate a variety of impressive abilities. Roy and Trigger's on-screen partnership, which reflected the spirit of the American West, enthralled audiences. Trigger's celebrity extended beyond the screen. He became a star in his own right, making public appearances with Roy. The couple captivated audiences, leaving a path of joy and admiration wherever they went. Trigger's remarkable beauty, golden coat, and charming attitude established him as a great celebrity. Trigger and Roy's connection became stronger with each passing year. The horse became an important component of Roy's public image and brand. Trigger's image appeared on a variety of goods, including action figures and posters, cementing his status as a beloved cowboy icon, marriage and relationships. The renowned cowboy explores the joys and disappointments that molded his life beyond the screen. On June 1933, while on tour with the Obaro Cowboys in Roswell, New Mexico, fate brought Roy and Grace Arlene Wilkins together. A radio caller offered Roy a pie if he sang the Swiss yodel. Little did they know that this encounter would lead to anything more. Roy and Grace married on June 11, 1936 in Roswell, after staying in touch since their first meeting. Their love story continued, and at 1941, Roy and Grace decided to grow their family by adopting a daughter called Cheryl Darlene. Two years later, the arrival of their daughter Linda Lou brought joy into their life. Their happiness, however, was cut short when Grace passed away a few days after giving birth to a son named Roy Jr., 1946, owing to difficulties. Roy Rogers' life changed dramatically in the depths of sadness. He met Dale Evans, and Dale developed a bond and fell in love immediately after Grace's demise. A poignant proposal followed during a rodeo at Chicago Stadium, and on New Year's Eve at 1947, they married at the Flying L Ranch in Davis, Oklahoma, 
a location familiar to them from filming Home in Oklahoma a few months prior. Roy and Dale shared the joys of motherhood, raising their own kid and adopting four more children. Their family includes Robin Elizabeth, who struggled with Down syndrome and passed away from mumps complications just before her second birthday. In addition, the couple adopted three daughters, Mimi, Dodie, and Debbie, as well as a son named Sandy. Dale Evans later wrote about their experience of losing Robin in her book, Angel Unaware. Roy and Dale began a new chapter in their lives at 1955 when they bought a ranch outside Chatsworth, California. The ranch, which began at 168 acres, quickly extended to 300 acres, becoming a location where the family could make lifelong memories. In 1964, Tragedy struck again when their daughter Debbie passed away in a church bus accident. In response, Roy and Dale chose to relocate to the 67-acre Double R Bar Ranch in Apple Valley, California. The property became a shelter for the family, providing consolation and allowing them to continue their journey together. Beyond his professions as a cowboy and a family man, Roy Rogers had a wide range of interests, his interest in flying was clear as he became a licensed pilot and proud owner of a Cessna Bobcat. Roy's life, full of victories and struggles, demonstrated the tenacity of the cowboy spirit both on and off screen. His long marriage to Dale Evans, the love they had, and the obstacles they conquered together formed an inspiring story of dedication and family relationships. Roy Rogers and Dale Evans made a lasting impression not just on the entertainment industry, but also on the hearts of everyone who followed their incredible journey. Demise Roy Rogers passed away on July 6, 1998, at the age of 86 in Apple Valley, California. The cause was congestive heart failure, which ended this famed cowboy's life. Roy's retirement left a vacuum in the hearts of many who grew up admiring his cowboy attitude, both on and off screen. His influence on the Western genre and entertainment as a whole was enormous, and his demise was felt across generations. Roy Rogers was laid to rest at Sunset Hills Memorial Park in Apple Valley after a life full of adventures, horses, and music. He was laid to rest amid the tranquil Californian countryside, surrounded by the immensity of the area he had grown to love. Roy's departure marked a new era in his legacy, not the end of it. His wife, Dale Evans, who had shared decades of joy and tribulations with him, passed away three years later. They found peace together in the same memorial site, where they were laid to rest, overlooking the landscapes they had come to call home. Roy Rogers' legacy carried on in the hearts of fans, and his influence went beyond the limits of the silver screen. He was more than just a singing cowboy. He represented tenacity, honesty, and the eternal spirit of the American West. Roy Rogers and Dale Evans' stories continued to resonate in the hearts of those who had followed their journey. The couple had survived storms together, drawing strength from their love and faith. Their marriage, characterized by its duration and strong closeness, inspired many. As the sun sank over Apple Valley, the memories of Roy Rogers and Dale Evans remained. Their names were inscribed in Hollywood history, not merely as performers, but also as people who had made a difference in the lives of others. The melodies of Roy and Dale's popular theme tune, Happy Trails, remained in the air, a reminder of the happiness they had brought to audiences all over the world. In the years that followed, the Double R Bar Ranch in Apple Valley, which had previously served as a backdrop to their family life, became a treasured landmark. It demonstrated the couple's love for each other, their children, and the Western way of life. Roy Rogers' influence extended beyond the entertainment industry. He was a Freemason, a pilot, and a man who had embraced life wholeheartedly. His legacy was more than just the characters he played on television. It was also about the principles he represented, such as honesty, loyalty, and the belief that a cowboy's journey extends beyond the horizon. Roy Rogers' weird makeover, Roy Rogers, the legendary singing cowboy, made a big debut in Hollywood with a contract from Republic Pictures. However, the path to stardom was not all straight sailing. The studio executives believed a makeover was in order, and they turned to the king of Hollywood himself, Clark Gable, for ideas. However, after so many years, 
Julie Rogers' Pamelia, Rogers' granddaughter, finally provided her perspective on this pivotal period. When Roy initially arrived in Hollywood, his expressive but squinty eyes sparked conversation among studio executives. Julie said, When Grandpa got to Hollywood, he had these incredibly squinty eyes. I know he was part Choctaw Native American. His eyes were quite expressive, but they were squinting and didn't like his eyes. As a result, they forced him to use prescription eye drops to relax the muscles and open his eyes. So his eyes grew bigger. The attempt to expand Roy's eyes was inspired by the renowned Clark Gable, who is famed for his fascinating gaze. However, supporters had a different perspective. It was Clark Gable's eyes that they were shooting for when it came to Grandpa, but he was never going to have Clark Gable's eyes, Rogers Pamelia said with a laugh. Fans, accustomed to Roy's distinguishing squint, expressed their displeasure, causing the company to abandon the vision-altering endeavor. The hunt for a Hollywood-worthy look did not end there. Makeup artists attempted to glue Roy's upper eyelids open. Unfortunately, the singing cowboy found the experiment uncomfortable. Roy's daughter, Cheryl Rogers, revealed that the eye drops produced headaches and the glue left his upper lids raw and uncomfortable. Roy mentioned his pain, stating that his eyeballs felt burnt by the late morning. Fortunately, this phase was brief, and Roy was able to remove the droplets and adhesive without causing permanent damage to his vision. Despite the eye-related problems, the studio was anxious to improve Roy's physical image on the silver screen. They believed he lacked sufficient muscles and created a novel strategy, a hundred handstands every day and walking on his hands. Rogers Pamelia recalled, They stated he didn't have enough muscles, so they told him to do a hundred handstands a day and walk around on his hands, which he did, and quite soon he was walking from set to set using his hands. Despite these attempts, the unique fitness program did not appeal to the audience, and the attempt to reinvent Roy's image failed. It became evident that the cowboy's attractiveness went beyond his physical looks, and the audience accepted him for who he was. Roy, who was naturally timid and had difficulty making small talk, found Hollywood parties to be yet another hurdle. In order to help him mingle with the celebrity crowd, the studio advised him to attend these events. Roy, being the country boy, took an unusual approach by asking if he could bring a buddy. What is his choice? He has a hunting partner. The couple spent the evening on a couch, talking coon hunting, perplexing the Hollywood elite. Rogers' Pamelia joked, and they were like, Okay, never. Museum. Roy Rogers, the cowboy celebrity we remember today, experienced a watershed point in his career when his success began to dwindle. Faced with the prospect of drifting into obscurity, Rogers developed a cunning solution. He purchased the rights to his name and likeness. He had no idea that this action would not only restart his career, but also make him a famous character in the world of cowboy entertainment. Rogers' acquisition of the rights to his name and image gave up a world of possibilities. Beyond the screen, he could use his cowboy identity and Dales to promote a wide range of things, including toy pistols, lunchboxes, and hats. This astute move transformed a failing performer into a brand icon, catapulting the Roy Rogers phenomenon to new heights. The Roy Rogers Show, widely regarded as a compelling mid-century program, signaled Rogers' comeback. The show, which aired intermittently throughout the 1950s, kept Rogers' name and image fresh in the memories of countless children. Rogers became a popular role model for children because he was the good guy in a sharp suit who always beat the evil ones. His bright outfit and distinctive boots heightened his young audience's admiration. The Roy Rogers Museum was opened in California in 1957 before relocating to Branson, Missouri. The museum became a pilgrimage place for loyal admirers, housing a wealth of memorabilia from Rogers' remarkable career. The museum's hallways were decked with flashy plastic saddles, leather cowboy boots with exotic designs, and even taxidermy creatures with whom he had previously worked. One particularly remarkable story from the museum involves Rogers' close relationship with his horse, Trigger. According to his son, Roy Rogers Jr., Rogers kept Trigger's demise a secret from the family for a year. Unable to stomach the notion of burying Trigger, 
He had the beloved horse stuffed and subsequently displayed in the museum. This one-of-a-kind and intimate collection included Dale's horse, Buttermilk, and their dog, Bullet, which captivated viewers despite its controversial character. The museum's eventual closing in 2009 left people asking why. The conclusion, it turned out, was consistent with Roger's insight. He had told his son to close the museum if it became a financial burden. Though there was no predetermined deadline for closing, the guiding philosophy was clear. If the museum starts costing you money, liquidate everything and move on. After witnessing diminishing profits and dwindling visitor numbers, the family took the difficult choice to close the museum, bringing an end to a chapter in the cowboy's legacy that had won the hearts of millions. Awards. Roy Rogers, the renowned cowboy of Hollywood, received countless distinctions and honors over his distinguished career. These accolades recognized not only his contributions to entertainment, but also his influence in various cultural sectors. In 1960, Rogers received three stars on the coveted Hollywood Walk of Fame. Rogers received the renowned Golden Boot Award in 1983, recognizing his outstanding contributions to the Western genre. In 1996, he received the Golden Boot Founders Award, confirming his reputation in the cowboy entertainment industry. Rogers' Choctaw heritage was recognized in 1967 when he was named Outstanding Indian Citizen of the Year by a group of Western tribes. This award underscored his cultural significance and spoke to groups who saw him as a representative of Native American ancestry. In 76, Rogers and his wife, Dale Evans, were inducted into the Western Performers Hall of Fame at the National Cowboy and Western Heritage Museum in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. This coveted award recognized their long-lasting impact on Western entertainment. Rogers was inducted into the Western Performers Hall of Fame for the second time in 1995, this time as a founder of the Sons of the Pioneers. This dual accolade highlighted his long-lasting influence on the Western genre, both as a solo performer and as a member of a great group. The state of Arkansas also honored Rogers, naming him an Arkansas traveler and giving him a diploma. This honor, granted by the governor of the state, indicated Rogers' great recognition and affection. Rogers received another honor in 2018 when he was inducted into the National Multicultural Western Heritage Museum, emphasizing the breadth and inclusiveness of his influence. In 2001, Roy Rogers and Dale Evans were honored with a Golden Palm Star on the Palm Springs Walk of Stars, adding a touch of Hollywood glamour. This celebrity immortalized the legacy at the center of the entertainment industry. We hope you enjoyed this video. We'll see you in the next one.